Are we live? Are we on? Anybody there? Let's see. Second uh, live show. And the first one was a little wild. And uh, kind of uh, trying to get used to this whole thing. So here I am trying to get... Uh, let me refresh this. So see who's on. See who's here. So episode number two, talking about selling on eBay with zero to little money. And uh, start off with some shout outs, whoever's out there. Uh, the con, uh, Jose, what's up? He comment, Jose comments on every single one of my videos. So I always have to say what's up to him. Um, Joey, what's up? Kind of hyped for this. We'll make sure we won't, we uh, don't disappoint. So uh, Gucci boy, what's up? Um, Zico, definitely worth watching. Your tips are always helpful. Thanks. William McGee, shout out. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining the live broadcast. And live is no joke because I was trying to balance like uh, live chat and answer questions, a whole bunch of stuff. So second episode, hopefully it'll be a lot better. Uh, what's up to what CR90 Mike? What's up? Dirty Dan. Uh, Marcos, what's up? Alex, hi um bro i'm literally at ross right now i need your help i'm at ross and they have two pairs of kobe 9 elite strategy for 80 bucks um is it worth picking up or no so you're talking about 80 bucks we didn't we talk about how uh, pricey some of these um kobe's are getting and some of the other shoes out there you guys saw what the lebrons were like 72 dollars and 10 cents kind of crazy um so i mean kobe 9 elite in general you will make money um but at that at that price though 80 bucks you said how many pairs what size are they too um i must ask you um you said two pairs um let's see who else uh gucci boy we already said what's up uh joseph medina hey man what's up uh ryan another q a sweet yes sir and let's see when we get back to our uh, to our man that's out there at Ross picking up two pairs of Kobe's. Um, so these, oh, here we go. Size 10 and nine and a half. So at 80 bucks, I think those are still selling for about 130, 140 range. I'll double check for you right now while I'm already on here. Because honestly, I haven't seen those, at least that colorway at Ross. But I would hate to tell you something. You pick them up, not really worth anything right now. But I think 120, yeah, like 120 is about the going rates. Not really a whole lot to be made. Let me check completed. Uh, 130, 140. Uh, it's a little iffy. You won't really make much if you want to keep it for the collection. I would definitely give you that thumbs up. But um, 80 bucks is really really pricey for them. And uh, four pairs. Let's see, Spida. He says uh, four pairs. They wanted eighty-six bucks. So yeah, it's a little pricey. You're looking at the eighty-dollar range. Uh, Jose, what's up? Nine one five in the house. Yes, sir. And uh, Joseph, we're going to Ross later on. Probably not today. And uh, Jose asks, should I pick up a pair of LeBron thirteens for eighty bucks at Ross? Um, I would leave those behind. Eighty bucks were still uh, pretty pricey. And uh, what's up, Glenn? Are the what are the best selling shoe size as far as men's go? I always try to go for like size nine through thirteen. There's uh, size thirteen sells pretty good too. Uh, so anything nine to thirteen, you're fine. Once you start going lower, size seven and eight, it's like borderline grade school. So you're kind of pushing it there. And then bigger than thirteen, most of those are like the huge sizes you see at the very end of the racks at Ross. So I'd probably like hold off on those unless you're getting them for a really really good price. But um, usually size nine to thirteen in men's sell pretty good. Um, should I get dunks? They're forty five on clearance. Depends what kind of dunks. Which ones are they? Um, there's different colorways and all that stuff too. Um, has some vacation. Sup? High school basketball talk. Shout out to Julian. What's up? uh angel freestyle nice what is the cheapest way to ship shoes usps box or to buy your own box always get the usps uh, shoe boxes they have them there they're free you don't want to be uh running around looking for boxes and stuff because it just it's gonna waste a lot of time and you're gonna get headaches trying to find boxes unless you work somewhere where they have a bunch of them but other than that i mean it's gonna be really really tough 
And um, yeah, Spyla says avoid the Kobe's not uh, Kobe nines. Um, unless they go to clearance, but I really, really doubt it. I'm pretty sure someone's going to pick them up to ball in because it's like the best shoe to play basketball in, at least in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of money, 80 bucks. When you can really just go on eBay and get the size you want for 120, you know what I mean? Like $40 more, get the size you want instead of just whatever random size Ross has. So there we go. Um, should I pick up youth LeBron 13s for 35? I would pass on those two LeBron 13s right now, not only for youth, but for men's as well are like not selling good at all. I know my Nike outlet's been trying to get rid of them. They keep going down to I think the lowest I've seen them were like 79 bucks for men's and retail. And those are what 200. I mean, they were quite a bit when they first came out. No one's really buying those. Everyone's looking forward to the LeBron 14s because I think they finally got rid of the style. I mean, LeBron didn't even want to wear the LeBron 13s because they're super heavy, super tight. So I would pass on those, especially for the kids sizes. I've seen a bunch of them um, at my Rosses. So pass on those. Um, let's see who else is out there. Uh, Joseph says, should I get some Jordan Neymar cleats at Ross for 45 bucks? Yes. I saw a couple of people on Instagram found the Jordan Neymar cleats. Definitely pick those up. Uh, I haven't seen them yet, but I have a friend too. He knows like all of the stuff about soccer stuff. He's like my do my go-to soccer guy, and um, he's pretty pumped about that. So hopefully I can find them. Um, they're really pretty sweet to find the Jordan Neymar cleats. Um, let's see. I always go to Ross locations where they have higher quality here in Arizona, but never find anything. Should I go to low-income Ross locations? Go to all Ross locations. Even the small ones, I have like some like some of the Rosses here in El Paso. There's like two of them that are really, really like small stores compared to like the one, um, one of them that I showed you guys with the cleats, the hyper venoms. Those that one was like a bigger Ross. That one always has good stuff. But um, I would just go to any of them because you never know what they're going to have. Um, let's see. So just saying what's up to everybody. Everybody's talking about cleats right now. I'm trying to get, I guess, see if there's better cleats and hopefully Ross will get some better stuff. They're, they're finally rebuilding because I know everybody has been kind of like impatient right now um, with how dry Ross has been, but they're, they're getting there. They're rebuilding. Um, so let's see. Uh, R R T. Hi. Said, so what's up? So today I want to like keep on adding on to the, the uh, people that at, that uh, submitted some questions on the website. If you want to submit anything, go to hustlerhacks.com slash giveaway. And uh, I'll throw your question in there. Going to give away the tubulars still. Still have those back there. I'm um, going to give those away this month. You can ask me anything. So um, before we get into like the main topic, which is selling on eBay with zero or little money, which I have like two people that had different, totally different situations. And, um, and they're looking on selling on eBay, but they don't have much money. And I really wanted to like really break this thing down. Like this thing might take a while, but I think it's definitely worth it. But the other two questions that people ask, I'm just going to answer those maybe kind of quickly because they don't really have to do with like reselling, but more of like shoe stuff that people have asked me. So we're, we'll get into a little bit of the shoe stuff with, um, you know, collections and things like that. Um, back into the live chat. Uh, Michael Cheddar Weather shirt was dope. Can't wait till I get into merch. So uh, I created a design for Chris, the Bonafide Hustler. He has uh, different um, like sayings and stuff. He wanted some different designs. So I made him a Cheddar Weather shirt. That was pretty cool too. I told him like, hey, once I go down to Austin, I'll definitely pick one up. So um, I thought it was pretty cool. You can check that out on merch um, on Amazon. Uh, I think he has a link on his uh, Facebook page, I think. So you can check that out. Um, a giveaway for subscribers. That is with the overall giveaway for the month. So you can go to my website and I have all the details on that. Um, also, heads up, if you can get into the um, all access passes nike 30 percent off um i think those are probably on whoever you know if you know someone that works at the outlet you can pick those up or ebay are people are actually selling them on ebay right now 30 percent off a uh, gift card or gift cards i guess you sh i should say because people were asking me how i got some i knew i used to know a guy that worked at the nike outlet recently uh probably like the one nearest 
me, but he ended up getting a teacher's job. So I no longer have the hookup as far as getting those 30% off cards. If you want to look on there right now on eBay, um, they are selling them for like five or seven bucks. So if you have a good outlet, Nike outlet in your area, I'd probably pick one of those up. And I think it's good from August, I think 23rd through 27th, I think. Um, there's even some people selling like packs of like five or 10 or something. So take a look at that if you want to save some good money at your local uh, Nike outlet. All right, back to the feed. Let's see, uh, best way to start on eBay. We're going to get into that. Um, let's see, slice work. I want to ask you, but I always forget, what is the percentage of stuff? Do you end up returning to Ross Marshalls because they don't sell? How long do you wait? I usually just wait it out, period, because uh, selling online, um, you're going to be you're going to be waiting in general. Some stuff sells really, really quick. Like um, the Kobe 10s that I did pick up, I sold those pretty quickly but not everything sells that quick i have a lot of stuff like a lot of the youth stuff that's been sitting around um, i'm probably gonna have to like lower the price maybe I'll, i'm still gonna make a little bit of profit i really don't like to return a lot of stuff i think they have a limit too on how often you're gonna be going by and returning things so i don't like to return a whole lot i just like to stay patient with it eventually i'll make some type of money if it goes down to like maybe two or three months and i'm holding on to it but realistically i want to like get rid of things as quickly as i can but it doesn't always happen that's just the name of the game though when you're talking about reselling things you're not going to sell everything very quickly but in the same time there's still money to be made there and i really don't like to uh you know return things too too often so i just say stay patient um better pictures better description better title um of course, you always want to accept returns and try to make some, uh, try to get some good photos and just stay patient with it. I know all that will come, but you also will sell it quicker if you're also like cross listing on Craigslist, offer up um, any local Facebook groups plus eBay. Then there's already like four of them on there on your market. You can get rid of them um, if you want to make that sale. So um, I really would, wouldn't depend on uh, returning things. All right, so someone had asked about B grades. I do have a B grade video. I released that one on Monday. Let me know what you think about that one because um, I have sold some B grades, even some like Ross mispricing. If you notice, some of them will say like, if perfect, you look at the tags, you look at everything. Nothing shows you that they're B grades. Sometimes they will uh, mis tag them. So you really have to look at all of the shoes instead of just passing by them and thinking like, um, it's probably still 80 bucks or still 50 bucks. Always look at them and double check because sometimes they do mess up on that stuff because they have a bunch of shoes going on at once. You never know. All right. Um, so let's get back. So let me get into the question. So let's see. Crash Jones is one of the um, subscribers that asked me something. There we go. There's his name. And his question is... Let me copy and paste it for you guys so you, can, you guys can see it in here. Um, so he asked me, would you rather look and dig through Ross and Marshalls for sneakers or buy them at retail stores like Foot Locker? And I think the excitement of going through stuff at Ross and Marshalls is like the whole thing, right? Like you get pumped up to see if you find something that's worth money compared to just going to like Foot Locker because that's just you know, general releases that everybody else can get their hands on. You want to like score deals that, um, you know, you can resell to make money or good deals that someone overpaid for. And then you're like, Hey, I found this at Ross for 60 bucks. You know what I mean? Like it's a totally different game and it's just a thrill of the hunt. So I would definitely rather go through Ross and Marshall's and see what there is. Um, that's pretty much what the whole like channel, all that stuff is based off of is just seeing what I could find. And, um, you know, because you never know what's out there. And like I said, going to Foot Locker, that's just going to the mall. That's just seeing the basic general releases. So not really that interested in doing that and overpaying for, for GRs, but definitely Ross and Marshalls over Foot Locker, any of that stuff. All right. Next question. Let's see that I was going to put for week two. 
This is from the happy seller. So you also entered into the giveaway. There we go. Happy seller. And he asks, here we go. It's even copy and paste this in here. Okay. Do you ever see a shoe that you want so badly you go out and pay retail or over retail for it? And do I have any examples? And the Yeezys for one, I mean, I paid way more than that. Um, I knew I wasn't going to get my hands on them, but I really wanted them. So I overpaid for them. And I think that's one of the, like the, like the biggest, I guess, like, I don't know, like some of the uh, sneaker heads don't really get it when it comes to that stuff, because whatever someone's willing to pay for it, that's how much they're willing to pay. You don't have to like make it seem like um you know i got it at raw so i have to sit i have to sell it to you for what i got it for that's not how much they're worth how much are the shoes worth in this case um yeezys are worth more than the retail because of the market so you have to look at what the market is right now and a lot of people are like oh well you're ripping people off like when you're looking at people you know overpaying for stuff as far as the yeezys go what i say i got ripped off well to me i really wanted them to somebody else they may not want them so it's really up to what you want and what you're willing to pay for so there we go and do i have any examples besides the yeezys i know people have asked me like are you gonna do any like sneaker show my collection i know it's like well behind i need to do that but any examples yes um i really really wanted dorn becker eight and i knew i wasn't gonna get them so I overpaid for them. And here's the weirdest thing. Like whenever I overpay or buy some shoe that I really, really want, I have like this weird phobia of like breaking them in when it comes to this stuff. So there we go. Um, this is my own personal collection and I haven't worn them. So that's what, that's what I'm telling you. I have like this phobia of like breaking in um, brand new sneakers that I just, I just have a weird feeling. So there we go. Um, I'll probably wear them sometime, but there we go. Um, another example, and I probably shouldn't have re um, probably bought these for how much that I did, but I also wanted Dornbecker 3s. So I have those personal collection and the same thing, I haven't worn them yet. And the weird thing, uh, like I don't really even like a lot of the Jordan stuff from this time because I know the quality wasn't all there. But this red and black colorway, everything about it, like I had to get these. And yes, I overpaid for them. Last example. And this shoe I really, really wanted. And I paid, considering how much they're probably worth now, they're probably gone down. I did pay 400 for them. But um, LeBron ate South Beach, which basically my channel, color, all that stuff. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins fan. Everything kind of based off of the color. So there we go. LeBron's. And uh, like I said, I paid like 400 for him. So there we go. Those are my three examples of uh, shoes that I paid uh, probably too much for, in case you were wondering. And I was to answer, what's his name? The happy seller answering your question right there. All right. So um, let me go back to the feed because now I'm like backed up. Um, Luis asks, is it getting harder to make money in this since you're revealing all of your techniques? The answer is no, because let me tell you why you have to have, if you know what you're doing and you've been doing this for as long as I have, and you have confidence in not only yourself, but in far, as far as like what you're doing, your business, eBay, Amazon, any of that. And in my case, YouTube channel, I'm going to get mine regardless. Like you can go to the same raw stores, you can go to the same savers, you can go to the same Goodwills that you want to. I'm still gonna get mine. And that's how much confidence I have in myself and I know what to look for. And I go as many times as possible. I don't have a certain time, none of that stuff. But I just know I'm gonna find my stuff. And if I didn't have any content for YouTube or maybe sales were really, really drying, then maybe something had happened. But I'm willing to help whoever else to um, if I see anybody, they ask me certain questions, willing to help anybody out. I think that's the difference too, because 
if I was like super, let's say stingy in certain things. And I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to help anybody. I don't care if anybody else makes money or anything like that. I think it's a totally different situation. If you want people to like fail, then you're not going to succeed either. And I had one, um, I know I talked about it a little bit in the story, but this one guy that lives in the same city as me, I've seen him a lot of times. And uh, he once told me like, you know, I have like, like a whole crew of like two or three dudes. We're going to be hitting up all the like Rosses, Savers, uh, Goodwill, all this stuff. And we're going to, you know, we're going to do all this and build this online thing and eBay and all this stuff. And I was like, dude, go ahead, get as many people as you want, do whatever you want <laughs> to make money. Regardless, I'm still going to find my stuff. You can have a whole team of you if you want to. It's not going to, it's not going to matter. So I'm going to find my stuff. Um, so no, I haven't had any like loss in sales or fines or any of that stuff since giving away my info. I've actually helped me because I've actually been able to answer questions like this or through email or do anything I can to help anybody because I was in the situation, which we're going to get into this main topic of selling on eBay without, without having any money or little money. I was in that exact situation, hating my job, wondering who was going to help me, which no one was going to help me because it's just all on me and what I wanted to do. And, you know, now I can give back to those people that also want to make money because it sucks when you're stuck at a job that you think, especially after getting a degree too, and going through the whole college thing, you think is going to work out and it doesn't, and you're stuck making the same amount of money. It really, really sucks. So, all right. Um, let's see who else is in here. Yo, what up? Grand Admiral. What's up? And uh, let's see who else. When is Adidas tubular giveaway? That's going to be at the end of the month. So probably on the 28th of this month, since it's a short month. Uh, Louis, did you do the Jordan backpack giveaway? Yes, I did. I gave that away uh, last month. And what do you think about Grant Hills 96? I think they're awesome. What kind of colorway do you have? Um, I love Grant Hill stuff uh, back in the day. Fila's. All right, so let's get into the main topic, which is I had two questions, two totally different situations, but the same thing. So the same thing as far as like what they wanted to know. And um, let's see. All right. Benji Skills was the one who asked. And he says, I don't have a lot of money to buy a lot of stuff. I find do you have any tips? There's this question. You're entered for the giveaway. And then I got an email from Jay. And he he was like the same, almost the same thing. Just that he he had a son. He wanted to make more money. Uh, Three-year-old son wants to make more money. Um, he gets he just gets tired of working the same, you know, nine to five and not getting any extra money, getting the same rate, wants to get into the reselling stuff, but doesn't have a lot of money as well. What do you do? So we'll get into that. So uh, Glenn, who's your favorite basketball player before I get into that? And uh, my favorite basketball player player used to be Glenn Rice for the Hornets. He got traded to the Lakers. I also went to the Lakers. Then I um, was following him and Shaq and Kobe. And then I went with Kobe, Kobe, my favorite player. And then right now I'm kind of at a loss because Lakers are still my favorite team. I guess I don't really have a favorite player at this point since Kobe is retired, but Lakers are still my team. Um, here we go. Who else is out there? Shout me out. Narsh Singh. Sorry if I Narish Singh. Sorry. Um, what's up? Shouting you out. Okay. So if you don't have much money, here's what you're going to have to do first. First, you're going to have to go through your house, apartment, wherever you are. You're going to have to find stuff that you no longer want. And the reason why I say this is because you're not going to spend any money right off the bat. You want to sell stuff that you just don't want, period. Maybe they're old sneakers you don't want, old kicks you don't want, old video games, um, even clothes. Like anything that you have, you're going to have to look it up on eBay, do the completed listings, which I think I showed you on one of the Q&As, how to look for um, completed listings on there. Look on there and see how much this stuff is, is going for. Because you also get to see you know, how the market is. Maybe the game or video games that you thought were once selling very well aren't really selling anymore. 
um, you want to look for that stuff. But go through your closet, apartment, house, all that stuff. You want to look it up, see what they're selling for. If you don't want it anymore, now you're going to practice listing on eBay. You're going to take, you know, great pictures, description, title, all that stuff. It's going to take time. One of the things that Jay told me in the email was that he was looking to do this ASAP, which is not, this is not like, a, you know, built in one day type of thing, like to resell stuff. And once you start to, you're not going to stop, which is the good thing because the money is going to start coming in. So he wanted to do this very quickly. How he can, he can like quit his job and start doing this full time. That's not going to happen overnight. I can guarantee you that. So start off with the stuff that you have in your house and flip that money now with that money now you're going to reinvest what are you going to buy now you're going to go to garage sales savers goodwill all the thrift stores all that stuff and swap meets those are like the five main ones you're going to go to now that you have money at least some money you don't even have to have a lot of money after you sell some of this stuff you know 25 50 bucks 75 bucks something to play with because at garage sales you can negotiate down, get stuff for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. I used to get like, <laughs> well, video games down to like two bucks each. I would negotiate with them. They'd give me like, I would tell, hey, how much for all of this stuff? Because you want to try to do things in bulk. When you go to garage sales, you get a great deal on those. Same thing with those snapback hats. I got those for like a dollar or two. And eventually when I bought all of them, got an even better deal. So Garage sales are good because you can negotiate and get down to a dollar or two dollars. You're not spending a lot of money either now that you have some money to reinvest. Same thing with the swap meets. If you go there, um, I'm not talking about those swap meets either that have like already set prices. You know, you have those people that set up tables. They already have set prices on what they want for uh, video games or shoes or clothing, stuff like that. You want to go to those. Uh, swap meets that I like to go to where you're actually going to have to dig to find stuff. That's the, that's the stuff you like because now you have to dig to find things and they don't really, you know, they're going to have to give you a price once you find a whole bunch of like stuff all at once, put it together, bundle it together, get a great deal for it. And then they'll give you pricing on it. And then you can go from there to see if it's worth it. But that's the beauty of having your smartphone eBay app, Amazon app. You can look at you can look at everything right there in your finger, like in your fingertips, right there. Just look it up, see what it's worth, see what it's selling for, without even having to like leave the store or the area. You don't have to go on a desktop computer and look it up. It's just right there in your hands to see how much something is going for. So I think it has gotten a little easier since then because now you can just research stuff compared to you know, not having the, the apps or the smartphone or back in the day flip phones or like none of that stuff, then yeah, it's changed. But I think it is easier though. So those two. And then when you go to Goodwill, Savers, you want to go on the days that they have certain sales. So they'll have certain uh, tags, colored tags. Green is half off. Red is half off. Blue is half off. Those are the days you want to go and then you get cheap stuff like um, t-shirts. Like I said in the other one, t-shirts down to like what, 70 cents or something. And t-shirts sell too. You find Nike, you find, you know, certain band or tour t-shirts that have dates on them. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Money in the Bank, CM Punk, when he uh, won, it was a Chicago one. He had a t-shirt that had like the certain date on there. I ended up finding that t-shirt. It was selling for like at the time, of course, because he won all this stuff. It was selling for like 250 bucks on eBay. And it was like a $20 t-shirt that people got at the actual event. I ended up finding that t-shirt later on at Savers for, I think it was like $3.99. I haven't sold it yet. I'm waiting for that guy to actually do something in UFC. And more than likely, they're probably just going to get rid of him since he sucked so badly. Um, in his first fight, but maybe I'm, I'm going to look at the market and see if um, that shirt will eventually go up in price. It's still selling surprisingly for like 50 or 60 bucks. But at one point, like I said, it was going for like 200 since you can only get that shirt at the event. 
So you're looking at t-shirts, something to do with that dated things for um, certain events that will sell. And that's only like 75 cents at Goodwill. If you go on the half days, um, same thing go um, being in El Paso though, we don't have a lot of like big time brands. Like people are finding like fancy stuff like Ralph Lauren purple label or any of like, I don't know, a lot of the stuff like you're not going to find well, you maybe once in a while. It's very, very rare. But um, a lot of people that I know in bigger cities, they're finding like crazy stuff, really expensive brands that are like, you know, retail 200, 250, 300 dollars for like a regular button up shirt. You're not really going to find that stuff in El Paso where we don't have that amount of money here in our city. So but depending on where you live, like my brother lives in Austin. If you live in Austin, you have like, man, I think last time I went, there was at least like 12 thrift stores just in a little area I was I was at. And that's like a totally different, you know, game changer compared to like a smaller city. And you got to do the best that you can in whatever city you're living in. So if you have a huge city, I mean, you have all of that stuff right there. But if you're in a small city, do the best you can. I have in El Paso two savers and like how many Goodwills? Not many, maybe like four or so. I mostly go to Ross because we have, I think we have more Ross stores than we do thrift stores. Like, I don't know, random, but there we go. So the next thing you have to be going to these stores, thrift stores. We talked about that garage sales, swap meets, all that stuff. Um, If you want get, to get, get rid of stuff quicker though, then you're going to want to cross list, which I mentioned earlier, Craigslist, offer up, let go, eBay. Um, Etsy has only like certain dates that you can actually do it. Um, but you wanted to put it on Etsy too. I've done that as well. I actually sold something on Etsy before it sold on eBay and I got more money for it. But if you're cross listing on all this stuff, um, you're going to get rid of it quicker because if it's only on one thing, eBay, um, you're gonna have to wait for till somebody buys it, but same thing on um, local Facebook groups. There's some pretty good ones too. Um, Craigslist, of course, you got to meet them up in person. Um, but if you have it listed across five or six different platforms, you're definitely gonna get rid of it quicker. So I would do that too. Once you have these certain items, you don't want them lingering around in your house because um, they do take up room. But um, that's what I would do. All right, so now that you are, um, you know, thrifting and doing all that stuff pretty regularly, now you can go to different stores and spend a little bit more money. This is why I don't tell people to go to Ross right off the bat if you do, if you don't really know what you're doing, because you're going to be spending a lot of money. Um, in that case, let's say for the example that we had right in the beginning of the show. Kobe nines for 80 bucks. You don't want to, you, you don't want to spend 80 bucks right off the bat if you don't have a lot of money and you don't want to risk a lot of stuff. So that's why Ross, TJ Maxx, uh, Burlington, Pawn Shops, uh, the Nike Outlet Store, that stuff is like later on because now you can, you really know what you're doing. You know what your market is, maybe what your niche is, what you're good at, what uh, you've done all your research. You actually have like an eBay following or store that you have built up then that definitely helps you but right off the bat you don't want to really want to go to ross and spend a lot of money to begin with so um actually before you go to ross burlington tj maxx i would go to plato's closet buffalo exchange and uptown cheapskate do you guys have any of those uh stores in your area we don't have in el paso we don't have buffalo exchange i went to that one in austin and I remember I did find Kobe uh, sevens. It's probably like two years ago. Kobe sevens sold pretty good for me. Um, they also have pretty good jerseys, a lot of like uh, old school t-shirts and stuff like that. Um, so Buffalo exchange is good. good. Plato's closet. We already know I have some finds from Plato's closet. Same thing with Tim legit looks for live. He has different Plato's closet videos. Uptown Cheapskate, I haven't really showed anything from that. I actually picked up like four Nike Swingman jerseys. Um, Bibby, uh, Rashid Wallace, uh, Gary Payton from actually when he played for the Lakers. And what was the other jersey that I picked up? I know I picked up four. 
uh, Nike Swingman jerseys from Uptown Cheapskate, and they were like, I think eight bucks, six bucks, or something like that. So um, that's another store you want to go to. Um, all right. So before we continue that, we'll go back into the feed. Now we're like super behind. All right. So uh, what is Savers? Just another thrift store. Um, Jacob, wait, what's up, Jacob? Have you seen any Shopify to eBay integration? I haven't yet, but definitely interested. Build up your own little following and do it that way. Um, Eduardo says, do you know if I need to have a minimum selling experience to join the global shipping for eBay? I think you do. I think you do have a cert have to have a certain, um, feedback rating to join it. So, um, build up the store and then you can join it. But once you, once it's available, do it right away. You have way more people viewing your items if you can do it. Um, let's see. Uh, RRT, do you think eBay or Amazon is good? Would you say it's good to diversify items on eBay and Amazon or just stick with one item on eBay? And um, that's the thing, though, is that eBay and Amazon are like two totally different platforms that you can't really sell everything you want to that you want to put on eBay on Amazon because Amazon has restrictions on certain items. So one of the restrictions, for example, I wasn't able to sell any more Nike stuff. So a lot of the Nike stuff that I went to the outlet, I wasn't able to do anymore because they had a full big restriction on there. But now um, I'm back on there. So Nike, I'm fine. Converse, I'm fine. Vans, I'm fine. But I still can't sell like Adidas or anything like that. So um, that I'm still restricted on. But yet on eBay, I could sell whatever I want. You can sell whatever shoes you want. DVDs is another example. Amazon, they're super picky when it comes to DVDs. Now they're even picky like on books because all this has to do is with um, counterfeit items like fake shoes, books, DVDs. All of this stuff affected this whole thing. And that's what really messed all that stuff up when it came to like selling on Amazon. So you can't really cross list them. And if you're going on Amazon FBA, which is totally different than eBay, then you're sending an item to the Amazon warehouse. And then once it sells, then they'll ship it straight to uh, um, the customer. So they're two totally different platforms. But as far as like a beginner goes, eBay is definitely the way to go because you don't have to worry about restrictions and all that stuff because um, that thing will limit your sales too. If Especially if you find like, a lot of different Jordans, Kobe's, LeBron's, all of that stuff in your area. And let's say like you're into the shoe game and you know shoes and that's like what you find the most. You're not gonna be able to sell that stuff on Amazon. So in that case, eBay is gonna be the best for you. But if you're into like retail arbitrage, going to Target, Walmart and finding things on sale or even regular price because some stuff still sells well, brand new items um, for cheap, you can send it into Amazon FBA and make your money that way. Then maybe it's just totally different. Like whatever you're into, whatever your niche is, then that works for you. But I would definitely go eBay route to start off. Um, JC Files and just up on my eBay game. Ball Deep, say my name. Didn't we talk about this last time? Balls Deep? Is it Balls Deep or Ball Deep? Because Balls Deep sounds funnier and better. Valentine's Day. There you go. Um, let's see slice work or sorry before that best stores to find uh, nba jerseys well we we're talking about used uh old school jerseys you just have to go thrifting same thing with plato's closet uh plato's closet doesn't have a lot of jerseys but buffalo exchange uptown cheapskate those i found uh jerseys for uh at so you can go to places like that um but it's really just going to be hit or miss and all of that stuff I'm um, going to thrift stores and everything. Uh, can you explain how you do your taxes for eBay? I have no idea where to start. I probably sold 2000 worth of Ross finds, but haven't been faithful to taxes. Slice work, my man. So yeah, taxes are like the crappiest thing about this whole thing. But the thing is, is that PayPal won't send you like complete tax forms unless you've gone over, I believe 10,000 in sales so in that case they'll send you um, a full uh tax document all that stuff that you have to fill out but even if you haven't gone over ten thousand in sales uh, you still have to file it in as income um, when you're doing your taxes but 
Uh, your taxes won't be that bad because it is under that 10,000 mark. And uh, they don't see it as like a huge amount of income coming in. But um, uh, I wouldn't be too, too worried about it in that case, like 2,000, 2,000. Um, but if it's 10,000, then uh, yeah, it's totally different. Um, let's see. Let's see who else, who else is on here. Sorry, I'm trying to go through the feed. Uh, can't believe books can be fake. Yeah, I couldn't believe that either. And books, like especially used books, textbooks that are uh, selling for big time money. I remember going to UTEP, going to college, and I had to buy like a stupid geology book for like 250 brand new. And then, of course, what happens like after the class, after the class is over, you try to get rid of it and like, oh, that's that's uh, last year's edition. We can't give you any money for that. And yeah, textbooks sell crazy on, on uh, Amazon. And then now people are counter, they have counterfeit books. So that's a ruined that. So there we go. Um, what is a good inventory amount for shoes to have steady sales on eBay? Well, the more you have, the better. Honestly, right now, because of my eBay store, I had like 50 something items. And um, like, I think how many shoes that I sell? I know the last like week or two, at least I've sold at least like 10, 15 pairs, maybe. Um, G Customs 41. If you want to find me on eBay, there I am. I need to list a lot of stuff. And like I said, I don't do this full time. Uh, I actually do more of a merch by Amazon uh, more than I do eBay. But eBay stuff, that money is definitely there. Um, I think what JJ says, uh, I picked up three pairs of the purple Kobe 10 elites for 75 each. I recall you saying that they sell well, but what can I realistically get without sitting on them for too long? Um, last time I checked, I did sell one pair of the purple Kobe 10 elites. I think I sold them for 140, but I did wait a little bit longer. Um, so uh 140 you might be able to get that for them which is still pretty good profit if you can do it 120 is probably more realistic but you're making a lot less unless you can get them for paying uh to pay for shipping that's a totally different thing so um ball deep you're going crazy over here like we get it it's cool it's funny we already talked about it but you don't want to get banned um let's see eduardo thanks man ivan what do you do as a living um, I have a family business and we do um, like trophies, awards, plaques, promotional items, um, all that stuff. So I'm there from eight to five, Monday through Thursday, but um, I do have some flex hours, especially like on Fridays. So I can do, um, you know, my YouTube videos and, and uh, thrifting and going to the outlet and doing all that stuff. So part of my side um hustle and doing that so um but when i worked at the university that was eight to five took me 45 minutes to get to work 45 minutes outside of work just to get back home making the same amount of money um which was like a three percent raise from one year to the next and that's when ebay amazon money started helping me out and i made more money doing that than i was doing in my regular job so then i knew it was definitely time to quit. So Jade asked you, did you go to college? Yes, I graduated bachelor's degree in 2009. Yeah, 2009 is when I graduated. Um, so yes, did go to college. And um, it's crazy too, because a lot of people are like, I've, I've seen so many people that make way more money selling stuff online than they do their the job that they went to college for. And that just sucks because that's just how it is right now as far as like the economy. So it sucks, but that's just the way it is. But you can definitely wait, uh, make uh, you know, way more money selling stuff online. Sorry, Ball Deep. You were cool in the beginning and then you started to like try to be cool and funny and just kept on saying the same thing. So you're gone. Um, let's see. Who else? Um, now I got to go back. Where am I? All right, Phase Dre, what's up? Represent 915, yes, sir. Um, anybody from El Paso, you want to meet up, definitely meet up. I am going to get more of those 30% um, off out Nike outlet 
card gift card thing I'll, i'm gonna give a couple of them away if you're in the el paso area because i don't think i'm gonna get them on time to give them away to subscribers which i really really wanted to do but i don't think i'm gonna get them in on time because they're only good till the 23rd so but if you're in el paso you want to meet up at the outlet or something and give you one of those cards for free um you know get 30 percent off whatever you buy at the outlet um let's see I gotta go back. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I quit my job last month. If you're killing it online, definitely quit because you make way more money. Um, what's up, Jose? Um, Louis, hook me up. Yes, sir. If you want to meet up, let me know. You can email me first. You want to meet up? Uh, Hustlerhacks1 um, at gmail.com. Um, phase Dre, I saw you at the Y. What, yeah, go play basketball at the Y uh, at 5 in the morning. So today I went to 5 a.m. to play basketball. I go on Fridays too to play basketball. Um, but it's getting like less and less people are going because it's like super early in the morning. But um, yeah, I go super early to go play basketball. I need to try to play like a lot, lot more though. I try to go on. I used to play like on Sundays too. We used to have like a men's league, used to play in that. But now I've just been hustling more and more and more, but I need to get into balling a little bit more. Um, let's see, anyone? Um, where are we? Where'd I go? Uh, anyone know if you can use Joe Lister Connect to Amazon Seller Central merch listing to eBay? I don't even know much about Joe Lister, honestly, Jacob. Um, I could probably ask more people in the green room that are dominating, especially when it comes to like Amazon um, FBA. Uh, to see what that Santos asks, do you ever come to Las Cruces and hit up the raw store or the Marshalls? I've gone a couple of times and I will admit I didn't find much when I went to Las Cruces, um, Ross and Marshalls. Uh, do they still have Hastings? Cause I know Hastings, I used to find stuff, video games and things like that to like flip, but, uh, I haven't gone to Las Cruces in a good while, which is only like what, 40, 45 minutes away. So I need to go more. Uh, Jade, what was your major? It was in graphic design and had a communications minor and graphic design has helped me now since Merch by Amazon, but I had a full-time graphic design job at the university and then I started hustling on the side and then that's where hustling overtook the job. All right. Um, how long do you keep shoes active until you consider uh, revising the listing? I like to put things for 30 days. If they don't sell uh, around the 30 days, then I'll probably do something with like the photos, the price, something isn't right to get um, a good amount of views. Sometimes you will get like, like eight to 10 um, people like following your item and then no one buys it or like eight to 10 watchers. And you're like, come on, man. Like, um, like that's just what happens. But um it happens but someone will eventually follow through hopefully um let's see um do you ever get worried about your neighbors might rob your house of shoes uh no i got i got plenty of cameras actually on a lot of different sides that's a pretty cool thing too especially with like the doorbell cameras now those cameras uh to put on the um front of the house uh, and also to put on the garage, like on top of the garage, a lot of cool, uh, like little hidden cameras you can get out there. So I'm a big fan of the cameras. So definitely do that. Um, let's see. Shopify drop shipping. I mostly know Shopify for like the print on demand stuff. I really don't get into the lot of like the drop shipping stuff. Uh, I've heard a lot of good and bad with drop shipping. I haven't like gotten the courage to try it yet with drop shipping. I know a lot of good money to be made if you can do it right, if you really, really know what you're doing. But I haven't gotten into that into that business. Um, a lot of my like reseller buddies that I know too haven't really gotten into it either. I think they really don't want to like risk a lot of their stuff too, um, especially if you're putting in a lot of money into it. It's kind of like a high risk, high reward when you're talking about drop shipping stuff um on the troy hello from el paso what's up selling on ebay for nine years well congrats on that keep making that money um do you buy dirty or messed up sneakers or jerseys and fix them do you think it's worth it definitely worth it same thing if you know what you're doing 
And uh, if you want, if you, especially if you're just dirty, if it's just dirty, you're cool. When you're talking about like ungluing or the soles, I've, I've replaced laces. That's not hard. Just buy them on eBay for super cheap. But when you're talking about ungluing and stuff like that, I'd probably like get someone else to repair them for you. Someone that knows what they're doing, get it done for cheap locally, um, Facebook group, stuff like that. You'll probably find someone to do it for you, but um, I think it's definitely worth it, especially if you're getting them from like Goodwill or Savers for like five or ten bucks for Jordans or something. I would definitely pick them up. Uh, Hastings closed. Yeah, I heard about that. I didn't know if the Las Cruces one had closed yet, but apparently it did. So that sucks. Um, let's see. Here we go. Going up. Going up. Going up. Dang, I'm like way behind. Okay, so. Do you take advantage of the 30 day return policy or do you hang on to your items hoping it will sell for the long term? It would have to be like if I if I bought them and then like one week to the next, like they really didn't, they just totally tanked in price, then I'll return them. But for the most part, I don't like returning a lot of stuff because um, they will catch on to. I know a lot of people, if you're going like every week to Ross returning stuff, I think they do give you a limit, especially like the big time stores. I think they'll give you like three returns a month or something because they already know you're reselling it. You can't sell it. And it's just a waste of time too to go back and forth. And you have that money that you're not making money because it's like now they have to go back to your debit card, all that stuff. So I'll just sit on it. 30 day return policy. Wait see what happens more than likely they'll sell anyway so sit on the 30 days you'll be fine um is this your full-time job now no um it's still a part-time hustle especially ebay is like my third it's like uh ebay merch by amazon and then my full-time job which those three and then youtube is probably fourth even though youtube probably takes a little bit more time but i make the least amount of money on youtube um, let's see, going down, do you sell, use, uh, do you sell, use Amazon custom, sell customized goods on Amazon? Um, I tried getting into it like for the uh, family business and uh, custom was a little weird to get used to. Like Amazon custom was a little weird compared to like Amazon FBA. It is, I'm still trying to learn it and it will take some time. Um, funky cold i get worried i have about 500 pairs of vans in my garage <laughs> yeah that's that's quite a bit you're gonna have to get rid of those either fba or ebay or something but you're probably talking about you know someone busting in or something taking all that inventory which totally understand um let's see spooky skeleton hello what's up you need help let me know ask me a question um let's see uh, Derek, what's up? Top five savings tips. So Derek is the uh, post office guy that I go and I see every single day at the post office dropping off all my eBay uh, selling. So what's up to Derek? Um, let's see who else. I had 15 watches and brand new OG Purple Ultra Boost at a comparative price and listing expired today. That's what sucks too. 15 watchers. You think someone's going to do something at least send you an offer but um if you if you relist it that's the thing too if you relist it more than likely you'll get someone send you an offer um at the beginning of the listing than the 30 days people are weird you never know um let's see um merch mania march 2nd merch mania i like that um I'm trying to see how the are you gonna cop the new Jordans that are coming out? The Jordan 13s, I think you were talking about. Um, Chicago 13s, probably not. I actually sold uh, my pair recently because they were kind of all messed up. I was thinking about replacing them with the new pair, but I don't know. Like, I'm still iffy when it comes to like general releases. Like, you guys saw some of the like Dornbecker and stuff like that that I have, but when it comes to like general releases, I guess I know that they're just man nike right now is just putting up so many of them like it's crazy and then of course people want to flip them right away on ebay but things don't always work out as everyone saw with like true blue threes or like even the recent like the royal foams like i really really wanted the royal foams and they were everywhere people have been finding them at the outlet now 
Um, so I don't know. I'm probably I'm I'm just very iffy when it comes to like general releases, like Black Cat 13s. Those when I first saw them, I was like, oh man, those are pretty cool. Like maybe I'll pick them up. And then once they got closer to the date, I was like, everyone's gonna get these, and they're not even that great. Like they're not rare or anything. They're not they're not numbered to a certain release. Um, if we're talking about like, um drake like ovo 12s like the black ones that are coming out those are pretty sweet and those are only what gonna be uh chicago release only or something like that so it's just crazy i'd rather pick up a pair that like not really a lot of people have than to spend a lot of money on uh on um general releases all right so going back going back see if i can go back to the feed um Show us your favorite sneaker. Um, I showed the up temples last time in one of the Q and E's. Um, do I buy and resell Yeezys? I don't. I don't have any bots or anything like that too. I have. I had one um, subscriber that was like trying to like tell me a lot of the stuff about the bots and going through all that, but I haven't gone through the bots to like resell Yeezys or any of that stuff. Um, not that I don't have the time, but if you guys remember, like couple of years ago people waiting in line for a long time i thought that was just ridiculous because with all that time you could be waiting in line you can literally be out hustling thrift stores and and i don't know what else to find stuff to resell instead of just waiting in line to flip you know a pair of jordan 11s or something for 30 bucks or i don't know but now that things are different with bots and um trying to win you know raffles and stuff then i think it's different because you're not putting in a lot of time to do it but if you have to wait in line i wouldn't do any of that stuff um do you relist or sell similar when listing expires uh, i usually just relist it but if it's been on there for a long time i'll probably try to change up the photos or something because obviously you hadn't sold for a certain reason might have been the price too i have to double check the market to see what certain shoes are selling for and that's just my fault i got to do the research on them uh, DRAM, do you ever go to Juarez? I've been to Juarez. I've, I went, I haven't gone there recently. I know my brother has. He has a passport, all that stuff. I know he went, but I haven't gone to Juarez in a long, long time. Um, Let's see. Do you, what's the question? Sorry, this thing keeps going back and forth. Um, Hype Instinct, hey, what's up? And uh, how old are you? I'm 31 years old. I actually got carded recently for um, at one of the casinos that I went to with some of my buddies, which is a, kind of a funny story. But yeah, I'm 31 years old. Um, let's see. I was going to go. Oh, that was another one on here. Uh, Tony Montana, only cop general releases below retail. Definitely agree. Or you go to the outlets. Find them on sale. A lot of the Kobe 11s went down to like 99 bucks at Foot Locker. And that's like the really good price to get them. And then, of course, end up finding the Mama Curials at Ross. Um, so you never know like when that stuff comes out. But when general releases come out at the very beginning, I, I would just like wait. Because depending on what the shoe is, like you can just get great deals later on um, at the outlet mall and things like that um hustler hacks which do you find works best auctions or buy it now and uh buy it now for sure i always do buy it now best offer because with the uh, the best offer apparently ebay put this out there that if you have a best offer on an item that your item will be uh ranked better when it comes to like best match so i always do best offer i add in more money um, because I know I'm going to get low ball offers. So I add more money on top of that. So I know I can kind of like have a little cushion in there for, uh, you know, like 10, 15 bucks. So when I do get the offers in, um, I'm still making the profit that I want to make auctions though. You have to have like a huge following on auctions now because Amazon changed that whole thing because now it's like two day shipping, Amazon prime. Everybody wants stuff like right, right now. So if you're doing auctions, you people don't want to wait for like seven day auctions or 10 day auctions, just waiting too long, unless you have a huge following like soul supremacy that they're just known for doing 99 cent auctions on shoes. Then in that case, you're going to make good money. I've seen some of those auctions go for like way more money than it would be for a, a buy it now for somebody else. Mo mostly too, because 
Soul Supremacy, you can trust them. You know you're going to get authentic shoes compared to somebody you don't trust on eBay. Um, did you hear about the guy who found Yeezy V2 at Nordstrom Rack? Uh, I think they ended up saying that that was fake, which I'm pretty sure it was fake. But I think he ended up saying it was fake because I think people were like, that's ridiculous and calling them out and stuff like that. Um, flu games. There we go. I ever found any luxury brands at Marshall's or Ross? Um, Marshall's, you probably have a better chance of finding like high price stuff. Um, especially like high price Ralph Lauren stuff, even for women too. I saw, I saw like crazy stuff for like, I think it was like, uh, what was it? I know it was like retail it was like 350 or something. Um, Marshall's more than likely you'll find something of like high brand, um, compared to Ross. I think Ross is like slowly getting there, but yet they'll still sl slip in like fat farm and, and I don't know what else Fila's and other stuff in there. So, and more than likely Marshall's won't carry that. So, um, let's see. I hate the low ball offer. Yes, sir. That happens for everything. Not only on eBay, try selling locally Craigslist. Facebook groups, all that stuff. You'll get low ball offers all day. All right, so back to the thing that we were talking about. <laughs> I went to the feed for a long time, but back to the thing we we're talking about. Um, let's see. All right, so we we're talking about throwing in. Once you start throwing in um, those stores, Ross, Burlington, TJ Maxx, pawn shops, Plato's Closet, Buffalo Exchange, Uptown Cheapskate, outlet stores. That's like a whole bunch of stores you can already be sourcing at. Once you've gotten good at sourcing at all of those stores, then I would throw on the next thing to add, which is Amazon. You can do a merchant fulfill or you can do the Amazon FBA. And once you're really, really good on Amazon, that's when things change because now you can do Amazon, eBay. Those are going to be the ones that are really going to sell quickly for you. But I wouldn't jump into Amazon quickly because... It is a little bit more difficult to try to learn. Some people don't like it. Some people love it. It's not for everybody. It's totally different from eBay. And uh, if you're used to eBay and you're really, really good at eBay, I would grow that best as possible before you get into Amazon FBA or Merchant Fulfilled FB. I mean, uh, Merchant Fulfilled Amazon, any of that stuff. Because, like I said, it is a little bit more uh, difficult. Um, let's see. Watching a lot of you of your YouTube. Thank you. Been helpful. Content are great. Thanks, unique Juliet. Thank you for uh, watching my channel and glad I can help you any way possible. Because um, I know a lot of people are out there trying to uh, you know make some extra money, and you can definitely do that by I just named a whole bunch of different places you can source at. And if you did this full time, you live in a big city, you can make a killing. Um, DRAM, what is the player that pissed in jersey behind you? It's actually Grant Hill jersey. Let's see if I can get it. So here it is. And it's actually like the champion authentic one. I was actually going to sell it because it is a little bit too small for me now. It's a size 40. Um, I have a 44 um, Grant Hill jersey. So I decided to just keep the 44 and then sell the, the size 40. So great condition. I still have to list it. That's why I have it here so I can uh, list it on eBay. So um, let's see on here. What's next? Um, how do you handle negative feedbacks? You're going to have to like work with the customer that bought your item. And that, that could take a while. I actually have one negative feedback that uh, this – this customer bought, it was stupid too. It was like a video game that they apparently it said they didn't work, which I tested it out and it worked. I send them the, the little uh, shipping label for them to ship it back and they didn't ship it back. They were like, oh, I got lazy to ship back the game. And I was like, well, you kept the game then. And wait, well, don't say it doesn't work and leave me a negative feedback if it works. So I tried working it out with this guy or girl or whoever it was. I think it was a lady because she said that, um, I forgot what she said. Oh, I shipped it to like a woman's name and she says something about her kids and they tried testing it out. It didn't work, all this stuff. It was a huge thing and they didn't take off the feedback. The customer can take off the feedback or eBay can take off the feedback, but eBay is only going to take off the feedback if it has something to do with like 
they have like threats or they're threatening you on eBay or um, they were talking about something to do with like shipping because shipping is not even in your control. Like if you're shipping it out the very next day through USPS, you don't have any control over that if they get it very quick. I mean, you did your part as far as shipping it out as quickly as possible. So um, eBay will, will take it off and it has to do with shipping. But even then, you're going to have to call them, tell them the situation. They're going to have to look into it. It does take longer than that. But to get it taken off right away it has to be done by the customer that bought that item from, from you. And if if they're cool, they're willing to work with you, then you'll get it done quick. If they're not, there's just going to be a whole hassle. Sometimes it's better just to move on, which is what I had to do. And it's my only negative on my account. Which is almost like a year old. So it's almost it's almost off of there. Um, let's see who is here. Not from El Paso is what S was asking. I think I think pretty much a lot of my subscribers aren't from El Paso. Um, how many PayPal offers have you accepted on eBay? <laughs> Which they tell you not to do on eBay. They're like, don't accept any PayPal. Um, because you're not insured and all that stuff. But in reality, eBay just wants to make sure it goes through them and they get their cut. And as far as PayPal offers, I think I've accepted, I don't even know how many, a lot of them. Um, I can't tell you that because people are willing to work with it. Um, they want to get a better deal. You don't want to pay a lot of fees when it comes to PayPal and eBay fees. So yeah, I've done, I've done it. Um, recently though, I think if maybe, uh, four to six months ago. I haven't really done it like the last two months or so. Um, most of them have just gone straight through eBay. Um, what's the most expensive thing you found at Marshall's? I ended up finding, I don't know if you guys remember the all-star game in Houston, how they had uh, like all the Kobe, LeBron, KD all-stars, how they had like a certain look to them with um, kind of like space, galaxy, that type of stuff. During that time, they did have like um, a jacket that was like a leather Nike jacket. I think retail was like 500 and Marshall's had it for a hundred bucks and I ended up selling it for like 300 at the time at the time. I'm going to have to go back through like my photos to show you guys all of that stuff because that one was a pretty good flip and it was an awesome looking jacket too. Like it was like a $500 retail jacket. Um, let's see. Let me go back. Uh, Joseph, have you heard of Legit Lifestyle? And that's Tim's uh, vlog channel. So um, he's doing crossing of vlogs through that channel. And then Legit Looks for Life, his regular uh, sneaker channel. So I've heard of it. And that thing's growing quick, uh, which is crazy, too, because he has over like 100 something subs. And then when Legit Lifestyle came out, um, he only had like 3000 or 1000 subs. Um, so I think a lot of people are finally like catching on now that he's made like more videos, um, slice work. I talked to some employees at Ross and they told me they restock every day except Saturday and Sunday. So I thought that was helpful, uh, thing for people. Cause I had assumed that that's when they would. And, um, I know one of my Rosses, I think they restock on Tuesdays, Saturdays and Sundays are the days I don't go to Ross actually because I never see anything new when I would go on those days and usually those days are like the days they're jam-packed so I don't think they want to get in anybody's way as far as like customers and they're trying to like restock they want to make sure their their stores are like ready to go so I never go during the weekend but I go as much as I can during the week and I, I can pretty much agree with that statement I think they do maybe not every day but as much as they can throughout the week, um, Saturday and Sunday, I really don't go um, in those days. So um, like Abe, Abe Bay Bay says, I usually go on Ross on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Thursdays and Sundays. That could work too. I think going at least, like I said, like three to five times a week, I think you're good. Um, Gilbert, what's up? Shout out from the hustler from Los Angeles. So what's up, Gilbert? Um, let's see. Go down. Uh, let's see Phoenix, Arizona in the house. I think I saw there we go. D Ram Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona in the house, Metallica, Avenged Sevenfold and Gojira 
going to concert over there in Phoenix, definitely think about going because that's going to be sick. And it's in August, I think. Random. Just trying to put that on there. Um, Derek, ask me anything about shipping um, for the inside scoop. I'll be here until 7 p.m. So like I said, Derek works, works at the post office that I go to. I know I've had a lot of different questions on shipping. He literally works there, so he can answer anything. He's in the uh, in the chat right now. So um, there we go. Uh, Matt, friend just bought Jordan 11s from eBay. They were clearly fake. The seller isn't responding. What should he do? Open a case? If you open a case and uh, you show pictures, everything that it's clearly fake, the, the guy is going to, once you open a case, that that seller is going to have his funds already um, on hold on his PayPal. So he really can't do anything until it gets resolved. So tell your friend to open a case, go from there, get that settled. I guarantee you um, your friend will get get uh, his money back. Um, FYI, you can return items back to Ross. You have 30 days. Yep, Ross has 30 days uh, store policy. Uh, Josh is from Raleigh, North Carolina. Going down, going down the list here. Um, I think, let's see, Gilbert was asking anybody else from Los Angeles there. He needs some serious motivation and personal advice. Need to get the ball rolling and need some one-on-one -on -one advice. So, hey, let me know, Gilbert, if you want to, I'm not from LA and probably won't be in LA for a long time. But if you just want to Skype or something, let me know. Like, I'll try to do whatever I can. Um, to get you motivated to make some money because that's the thing though i want to help anybody that i can you want to make uh, money in your area trust me um do whatever i can to help you out um how do you know the names of the shoes at ross to look up i struggle sometimes to find them on ebay and that goes back to the other q a video i think i did a couple of weeks ago like First off, if I just know the model off the general, like, you know, general, I could just look it up. Cool. Uh, especially when it comes to like Kobe's little bronze, I'll just look it up. But you can always look up the uh, five digits inside. Um, you probably can't even see it in here, but, you know, the five digit tag in there in, in the Nike shoes. Look up. Actually, let me look it up. Oh, man. So it's like the six digits dash three digits. So nine digits total. You can look it up in there and you can see what the actual um, shoe is to see what uh, what it's called, what the name is, and um, look it up on eBay. Um, have you resold any NES classics? I haven't. I didn't even try to get those. I think we had like one of the Walmarts had two. Um, we have a bunch of Walmarts and none of them came through with like a lot of them in our area. So I didn't even try. Uh, I know my cousin got one. But I didn't even try when it came to the NES Classic. But some people did make some pretty good money, especially um, when you install fear on people <laughs> during Christmas time and people are going to, like, overspend, then that happens. Um, Yo, Hustler, are you interested in trading in shoes? Uh, what size are you? I'm a size 11. Um, I'm down to trade or even buy if you have anything I like. Let me know. Um, that's from Slice Work. Um, let me go down. I haven't found anything in the last two days at almost five different stores. Is that normal if I'm sourcing on a regular basics uh, basis? Yes, it is normal. Um, a lot of the Rosses right now are a little up and down. So I don't expect to find anything every time I go. I try to just go like hopefully I'll find something cool. But a lot of the times I leave with nothing. That's just what happens. Like that's just the name of the game. That can happen to you not only at Ross but just thrift stores in general too because you're not going to find something cool all the time. There's, there's going to be days out there um, we don't find anything. So it's just what happens. Uh, Santos used to come to Dallas. There's a lot of heat. So I would love to go to Dallas too, especially um, I know Tim went out there for the sneaker con. So um, that would be pretty cool to go out there for Dallas. Um, are you planning to get your own private label? Um, I'm not um, trying to get any private label product, but um but I have done private label designing for different people. They've I've worked with people that are doing like weightlifting gloves to food type of products. Like I designed the whole packaging for them. So I know a little bit of how to do that part of it as far as like getting my own 
product and all that stuff. I know like working with people with like Alibaba and getting all that, like I know that's a long time process. So um, I don't know, not really something I'm interested in doing right now. Um, would you resell full time? How hard do you think it would be? I don't think it would be hard at all. If you, if you're already doing good part time, you're getting used to selling, you're making money, good money right now. I don't think it'll be difficult at all. Um, cause you, now you have all the time to source and those stores that I, um, just talked about stores, garage sales, all that stuff. There's a lot of, a lot of places you can source, um, for items. So I don't think it would be hard, but you have to put in the work. You have to be like a hundred percent dedicated to it for sure. If you slack off and you're hoping that you're going to make money next month, but you're just kind of iffy on it. It's not going to happen. You're like reselling. You're really going to have to be dedicated because now you're not on like a full, now you're not on a salary like you would working for somebody else. And you know, people are too. If you're working on a salary, a uh, salary paid position, you go on, you go on a uh, Facebook for a little bit. You'll chill. Maybe you'll watch some of my videos, YouTube, chill. Then you'll work on something for a little bit and then you'll go talk to like other people. Then you'll come back to your desk. Then you'll chill then you'll work on it for a little bit. So, you know, it's just, it's totally different. You can slack off. You're still going to get paid uh, with a salary position, but as uh, going hundred percent, going full time. Yeah. That's all you and you make the money you want to make. So if you're going hundred percent, you're going all out, you're staying all staying up all late and just dedicated to reselling, you'll make a killing out there. So I don't think it'd be, I don't think it'd be tough. Um, What's the top three shoes that you own? Um, I'd have to go through them to see. Um, besides the one I show you guys, I don't think. I mean, I love the Dornbeckers, but I don't. I don't know their top three that I really, really love. But I'd have. To, I'd have to go through. Go through them. I don't have a lot, a lot of shoes, but I'd have to go through them and see. Um, Caroline, you didn't get the notification. What happened? Caroline's in the feed, and I don't know what happened. Um, I guess we have to. I'm going to have to see what happened and why you didn't get a notification that I went live. But hopefully if you do, if you follow me, you can hit the button, the little, I think it's like what the little bell and get the notification when I'm live or when a new video comes out or something like that. What is your uh, profit margin for pulling the trigger and buying at Ross? And I had this uh, through the email too. And standard like return on investment when it comes to business is 40%. So I want to make 40% on an item, especially from Ross. Maybe I'll go, what, 35, 25% if it's something that's like very low risk. But most of the time you want to make 40% or more to make it worth your while. When it comes to like Ross finds, if you're going to like garage sales, you're spending low money, dollar, two dollars, five dollars, then I think that's totally different. You want to, you know, that's low risk, high reward stuff that you'll probably make over 100% ROI. On that kind of stuff but 40 percent is like the minimum kayla hey what's up and hey source guy what's up um why do you only wear black earrings those are the only ones that i have like the only plugs that i have and i don't even know if i'm even gonna keep them for a long time so um let's see josh said my biggest issue is time to source for sure and i think that you have like a if you're dating somebody right now, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, you have a wife, husband, something, you can work up like a like a tag team and even get somebody to take the pictures for you, then that's like half the battle. Because I think taking the pictures takes the longest. Like if you're, especially clothing, shoes, not so much because I can just set them up over here. I have the lighting. I'll take the pictures and I'm good. But if you're talking about um, like jerseys, clothing, like I measure everything. I make sure I put that in the description. That stuff's going to take longer to do. So in that case, if you have like a full little team going um, where you guys can like take turns taking pictures or sourcing or something, then then that's even better because now you're not wasting time, um, you know, doing some of the petty stuff. So um, there we go. People are asking Derek some questions when it comes to the uh, mailing stuff out. So ask him away. It works at the post office. It'll help you out. And co like even from this, like um, I saw from another YouTuber that a person is able to modify the regular mailing boxes to fit a shoe box, but priority boxes can't be modified. Is that true? So I'm interested to see what Derek says because 
I know as far as like the flat rate ones go, you can't mess with those. Like those are a specific size for a reason and you can't mess with those or modify them the way you want to and transform it into this mega box. Like it's not going to work, but I have done, I have modified some of those priority ones though to fit. Like when I was selling those guitar hero guitars on eBay before I was selling them on Amazon, I would modify the box for sure. But I think as long as they have like you put in the right uh, size and the weight, I think you're good to go, but not, the uh the flat rate boxes i wouldn't you can't mess with those but let's see what derek says when it comes to that uh dram what is your main job and um i answered that one earlier i work uh with my family a family owned business so i do graphic design for that we do stuff for uh some of the other um like our uh i probably shouldn't say one of our what our clients are but um I do some of that like design work, like flyers and other stuff for them, brochures, um, different um, promotional items that we do for different companies. We do that. So I'll, I'll get that done for them. But um, that's what I mostly do, my full time job. But we do like trophies and uh, awards, plaques, promotional items, graphic design, banners, business cards, all of that stuff pretty much. So um, I do that in my regular job, which is like takes up most of my time and then i do merch by amazon which I'll, I'll sell the t-shirts you guys have seen some of those videos and then i do ebay which is like my third um income stuff and then youtube which i get the least amount of money for but i do put in quite a bit of work on uh on youtube so let's see are you going to the next sneaker con i was thinking about going to the phoenix it's not even a sneaker con but um, ben had those and it used to be called, what was it called before they changed, they changed the name to like desert showdown or desert something. I was thinking about going to that one. I think that's like already in April, I think. So I was thinking about going to that one um, in Phoenix is probably like the nearest one. Any sneaker cons, maybe if they go to the Dallas one, that'd be kind of cool to go to. Um I don't really know any of the other ones that are going to come near. Most of them that I see are like New York area, some of the Carolina areas. Um, so I really don't um, see myself going to any of those. Um, so there you go. Derek has answered the question as far as like modifying the the boxes. Uh, Crystal, what's up? What are the best things to look out for when sourcing shoes at Ross for someone who isn't very familiar with sneakers? There's so many to look at. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of stuff when you go to Ross to look at. And I know you can get like overwhelmed because you're like, what do I look at? What do I look for? What do I do? And if you don't know anything about shoes, I try to tell people like the same um, try to hints and tips and stuff. And that is like it, it will take time, but start by looking up a lot of the Nike shoes when you have those, you know, already on there as far as like the the nine digits. Look those up to see you. Once you get more familiar with them, you already looked it up. You know, you're not have to look it up again when you go to a different Ross. A lot of the brands that aren't really doing that good. Like we said, Fat Farm and Fila. And there's another brand on there too that I was like, what is that? Like, I don't even know what it was called, but I've never seen them. They don't really sell very well. You know, to try to skip those. But anything that looks when it comes to like Nike, all that stuff, you want to look for or even Jordans. If you're not familiar with Jordans, you know what the Jordan, what the Jumpman looks like. You're going to have to look it up, get used to that stuff first before you really, really know what you're doing. Because if you're not a sneakerhead, don't really know much about sneakers, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get used to it or try to look up things. But you're going to have to put in the time and, um, and, and the effort to see what it is. And once you start gaining that momentum, then you'll be fine. But um, it's going to be way easier for somebody that knows what they're talking about or has some sneaker um, collection, sneaker head. It's going to be easier for them to know. Uh, Christian A, what's up? And um, there we go through uh, through the feed. So um, that was my main answer when it came to like, you know, going through eBay and starting off with no money. Um, so going through the steps really, really quick. I had them on here quickly find stuff in your house sell that first you get to eliminate junk and you get to make extra money and you're not spending any money right off the bat 
Um, number two, once you sold those things, now you have some money to play with. Now you want to go to places where you're not going to be spending a whole lot. So we um, we mentioned uh, garage sales, swap meets, because you can negotiate at those places. Um, and then we mentioned uh, thrift stores like Savers and Goodwill and Family Thrift Center because they have uh, certain colors that uh, you can go on those half off days. So now you can reinvest on these type of things because you're still not spending a whole lot of money and you have some money to play with by selling that junk that you didn't want anyway. After that, you've gotten used to that. You're spending low money. Now you're making more profits. Now you can go to places like the uh, Buffalo Exchange, Plato's Closet, Uptown Cheapskate, Outlet Stores, Ross, Burlington, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, all of those places. Now you have some money to work with. So now you can, and DD's discounts. There we go. DRAM says El Paso have a DD's discounts. Yes, they do. Um, take a look at some of those dad hats at DD's discounts. Like they're actually pretty cool. Um, and they're super cheap, but DD's discounts, you can also find it's pretty much like Ross. It's owned by Ross. That's another store you can go to. And you can now add all of, and pawn shops. Now you can add all of those places to source to your arsenal. And now you have a whole bunch of places to source from. So one step at a time, it's going to take some time to grow it. I know it doesn't happen overnight, but um, don't leave any money on the table. Like $3 is $3, $5 is $5. In the very beginning, I didn't leave any of that stuff because I know I knew at that point, like it would just keep growing and growing and growing. Now I'm a little bit more picky because of time. Um, so I kind of leave some of the low profit stuff behind because I know I need to put more effort into uh, merch by Amazon right now to get those t-shirts selling. Um, but it's, if you're in the very beginning, you're starting off. Yeah. Don't, don't uh, leave money on the table because all that stuff will add up very, very quickly. Next thing you know, you have like extra money for a car payment, uh, extra money for your student loans or credit card payment or hell, if you just want to buy an extra pair of Jordans that you didn't have before, now you have that money to do it too. And you just got it from, you know, selling random stuff. So really didn't even, um, you know, break your wallet or anything like that since you were out there hustling. So um, there we go. We went pretty long. Like I didn't think I was going to go this long, like an extra hour and a half. I think I was only supposed to go for like an hour, but a lot of stuff came into the feed. I wanted to make sure I get to everybody's questions and stuff. So um, thanks guys for watching and being part of uh, the live show. And like I said, I want to do this every single Wednesday. I know I get random questions, especially coming in for the giveaway. All those people that I put in to the chat, um, you're part of the giveaway, but um. I want to make sure that I get to everybody's questions every week because everybody has like, you know, crazy stuff they're doing right now, eBay, Amazon, stuff to make some money. So any way that I can help, um, I'll definitely do that. So I'm not not trying to uh, charge anybody any random stuff or make – people have asked me about like making guides or books or any of that stuff. Like I just don't – I don't know how I can help people like make money if i'm charging them for like books and stuff like that like it just doesn't make sense to me if i was to make a book it would have to be like a legit book that you'd have to like get off of like amazon and barnes and noble and stuff that i had some type of like publishing deal other than that i don't want to make you know simple 20 page guides and charge people 20 30 bucks like it's not my style it's not what i do i'd rather just help somebody out because i know how that how that feels to like not have you know a lot of money and to try to like build it up when you're when you're working somewhere like just trying to make it because of student loans and credit cards and all that stuff like it sucks so you know i don't want to do any of that stuff or uh you know make try to make money off subscribers i'd rather meet them meet subscribers and uh, have them tell me you know thanks for for your help and thanks for this and that because i think that's like the best thing that you can actually help people um that really will have questions so there we go thanks guys again and have some uh different last questions that are um when you say don't leave mon don't leave money on your table you're making three four five dollar profit do you still pay for shipping or not um, in that case, um, just depends. Like if, 
uh, even if you do pay for shipping, you could still make, you know, more than $5 profit, which most of my finds are, uh, especially with like the Kobe's. I think I made like 25 to $35 profit on those recently, but, um, um, that's really up to you and what your business plan and what your business goals are. And if, um, you don't want to leave three, four, five dollars profit, then that's totally up to you. In my case, I didn't have the time because now I'm doing other platforms. But if you're just doing eBay, I would take a three dollar profit any day because three dollars you didn't have. And uh, Christian, I have a t shirt idea. Can I email it to you and get your thoughts? Yeah, email me hustlerhacks1 at gmail.com. Anybody else that wants to email me, email me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I know I was a little behind. Cause I had like a whole bunch of them came in at once, but, um, let me type it for you and, uh, does it let me do it. Did it go through? There we go. Hustlerhacks1 at gmail.com and I'll answer, uh, your questions as soon as I can. Cause I know everybody's in different situations. So there we go. Thanks guys. Thanks for everybody else. Josh, I saw you on there. Uh, uh, war for war. Thank you for your time. Thanks guys for, uh, for going on the live, um, live feed and the chat and everything like that so thanks i will see you guys oh derek do you ever use local app services like offer up to sell your products that don't move as well i have done it uh, i haven't done it recently because of time like i said but i have done offer up i was huge into craigslist and then i kind of stopped on that too because um because then i brought on amazon fba so i kind of stopped on that so all right guys thanks again we'll see you thanks see you guys next wednesday tomorrow though is um Ross finds of the week. So I think you guys will like this one way better find of Ross finds of the week than last week, but you guys will like that one. So see that tomorrow. All right, guys, we'll see you go out and get it.